So the, the invited speaker this afternoon is Brigitte Valley. Most of you uh, know her, or in particular, she's well known for having introduced uh, techniques from uh, dynamical systems in analysis of algorithms and uh, applying those uh, ideas and developing them for various algorithmic questions, like the Euclid algorithm, text searching, compression, various. She's also very well known in France because she, with Philip, she really set up this area community that's still uh, working so well that you can see so many different people in the world. So, go ahead. Thank you, Bruno. Okay. So, first, <clears throat> This is a joint work with Ali Akazi and Frédéric Paco. Frédéric is here. And, okay. I wish to build um, sources with zero entropy. So the process, the general process is as follows. We begin with starting sources. Source are of positive entropy, but with a well-known geometry and well-known analysis. Then we change the source with rescaling and inserting delays, and we obtain new source of zero entropy. But this rescaling process, of course, modifies the entropy, but not the geometry of the source. This is why the new source that we obtain may be precisely analyzed, because in fact, they, they inherit a geometry from the starting source. Change the entropy, but not the, but not the geometry. Okay, so um, the two first parts are about re recalling main facts about uh, sources, generating function, and also main study. Um, one I wish to do. Sorry so, to interrupt. Know. Sorry, sorry to interrupt, but we're not seeing any slides on Zoom. Oh, oh no, that's terrible. <laughs> I'm very sorry. Oh, I'm very sorry. Thank okay. you, Jim. Okay. We had shared it early. How about now, my friend? Yes, thank you. So you you see now the slides. You haven't yes. missed the main part yes, yet. Yes, thank you. Yes, we <laughs> see the slides. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mark. <laughs> Yes, okay. So um, I described the plan of the talk. So the, the, two, the two first parts are about general facts about the sources, weights, generating function, and the main study, uh, what I wish to do. Uh, property of Shannon, Macmillan, Bremer means some property about the, the logarithm of the probability of the source, and also the average depth of price, because, of course, the average the, the behavior of twice depends on the property of the source. Then, the, after the, I, I follow, I follow the, the main plan. So I, I, I first describe sources of positive entropy. Then I change the sources. This is a process of rescaling or inserting DS. And in, at, at the end, I obtain the analysis of the new source. And with the main property I am interested in, property a la Shannon, Macmillan, Bremen, and uh, analysis of average depth of twice. Okay. Okay, first, general facts about the source. So, what is a source? We begin with an alphabet. It perhaps finite or infinite denumerable. And the source on the over this alphabet is just a probabilistic process defined on the unit interval of the unit real interval, which emits a digit from sigma at one at each discrete time. When the time evolves, it associates with an, an in, a real input, an infinite word, which is called the expansion of X in base, because base is reminiscent of numeration. Process. Okay, so for a prefix W of, of depth K, the fundamental set associated with W is the subset IW, which gather all the real X for which the expansion begins with the prefix W. 
in a general setting, but uh, I did, I did not describe uh, this part. In a general setting, the subset IW is a, an interval of length PW. Why PW? Because PW is just the probability that the word begins with the prefix W. Okay, so we have, I represent here the, the, the subset IW, uh, depending on the depth of the, of, of the interval. Depth means the length of the prefix related to the, to the, to the interval. So at depth zero, nothing. It's the total interval. And after this, the, 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 for instance, the interval, so here, more than here. So um, the total interval, then the, the interval uh, for which the, uh, the, the expansion begins with zero, is one, and so on. Of course, when I consider the, the, the partition form with all the interval uh, of the same depth, of course, this is a partition, and uh, this is a um, nested partition, because of course, PK plus one is a refinement of PK. Okay. So PW is um, important. This is the probability that the world begins with W. And I build with this on this the PW, the generating function of the sets. First, lambda sub k is just the generating function for uh, related to the prefix of Planck's k, and lambda of s is a total series. Okay, IW, uh, the interval are very important. Here, we consider the same interval, but not exactly from the same point of view. We consider a depth k, an input x, and the, the case coincidence interval of x is, is adjust the set, the, and it, it is an interval, and it is a, a subset <coughs> of a real y for which m of y, the expansion, begin with the same prefix of length k as m of x. Of course, this is the same interval as previously, but uh, not seen from the same point of view. And of course, the random variable uh, that associate to, uh, to x i sub k of x is a staircase function. And when x belongs to i w, of course, i sub k of x is equal to uh, i w. Then, now the main random, the main random variable of interest for the source are, are the length of this uh, interval, i sub k of x, and also because in a general, general setting, at least for classical source, this uh, the length uh, decreases in, 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 in exponential, in exponential way. So we are interested in the growth rate. And for instance, it is, this, this fact will be very important in, in the following. When I consider the moment generating function of log of minus log of the probability, uh, it is related to lambda sub k. Why? Because so it's, it's a simple computation. Yeah, the moment generating function there. Then when W belongs to, to, to sigma to the K, okay, this one is this one, and we get to the here of the length of the, of the interval. So we have been lambda sub K of one minus six. Now wait. So I define two, two types of weights, first Shannon weight and then exponential weight. So what is a Shannon weight? Shannon weight is just an extension of the Shannon entropy. It, it deals with the, the, the exp expectation of minus log of I sub K. And we see that the, uh, the source has a Shannon weight G of K. If uh, the expectation, this expectation uh, is <coughs> associated to G, to GK. And of course, when uh, GK is of order HK, then we, we, we recover 
the notion of the well-known notion of Shannon entropy, which is this. So Shannon weight, just an extension of Shannon entropy. And Shannon entropy recover um, uh, the, the Shannon entropy when, uh, when G, G of A is asymptotic to HK. H is the entropy. Now, so exponential way, so the definition is more complicated, but so we skip the definition and we say, in fact, that the source has an exponential way F of K if its lambda K series has a quasi power behavior like this. So you have um, function U and we consider lambda sub K of S, the main important thing is the red thing here. So it is uh, u to the s, u, u, u of s to the fk. So this means the quasi power of the So you have some, and the reminder of the formula is some more, less important things, the reminder first. But what is important in some, we, we need some uniform uh, Okay, so main study on sources. So I am interested in two, two main properties, property of the uh, Macmillan Bremen, and the average depth of price. So what is property of the Shannon Macmillan Bremen? It is a property about the log of I sub K of X. And here, uh, we are, we are um, uh, interested in asymptotic behavior this function. And the, the first theorem says that the law, if, if the source admits an exponential weight f with space u, then first the source admits a Shannon weight of, of, of order fk with the, with the coefficient here u prime 1. And second, if the, the function u is strictly log correct, then we are we, uh, the, the variable uh, uh, follow asymptotically a Gaussian law. And we see here the expectation. The expectation is the Shannon weight, and the variance also is uh, of the same order. And we are here. Uh, this is uh, So the proof is easy. This is just an application of the quasi power theorem of forms, which relate the quasi power behavior of the moment generating function and an asymptotic motion. So just, just one or two lines of two. What is important is, as we will see, the source that we choose as our starting point the good source in a sense, have an exponential weight of order k and a positive entropy. Now about tries. So I think anybody here knows what is a try. So a try is a tree which is used as a dictionary. And here we consider a, a try build on sources on words emitted by sources, it means the, ex the expansion, in fact, of uh, M, M of, so the sequence, the subsequence X is exactly uh, the, the image by M of the subsequence Y, where Y is a, is a sequence of uh, points of the unit interval. Try is defined by the three Facts and so this fact depends on the cardinality of the, of the, of the sequence. But the main property is uh, you can see, which means what happens when we are, when I have uh, subsequent of cardinality at least equal to two, that is why subdivide the world. And for instance, in the, in the, in the case of um, 
alphabet um, A, B, C, for I put on the left branch all the words which begin with E, in the middle all the, all the words which begin with B, and then on the right, all the words which begin with C, and I continue here at, the, the, at this level, but with uh, here I uh, strip uh, the, the symbol A because all these uh, words in this branch begin with A. Okay, and when I stop, I stop when I, I obtain this fact or this one. Okay. So I am interested here in a particular parameter of the try, which I call the try depth. And the try depth is just the length of a random branch, or of a random branch. So the try here, when n, the cardinality is equal to n, the try has n branches. And I and I, I choose I want at random um, a branch, and I consider its length, and it is the try depth. And when the cardinality is equal <coughs> to L, I denote it by D n of x. And the main uh, the main parameter, so the main parameter is the try depth, and the main study is the expectation of the depth. So, when I consider just the definition of the try and the definition also of the try depth, it is easy to obtain this expression for the expectation of the depth. Okay, so this is sum uh, with, a, with a binomial coefficient, and you have signs. So, it is not easy to deal with. Well, this is a sort of, uh, of expression. It is, it is classical. And via the Rice method, we, we, we change. So we, we consider here the, the, this expression with an expression about residues. And we change the, 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 the integral and so on. And finally, uh, we obtain. Um, an integral which is uh, relative to the lambda, lambda and lambda of s. And uh, if we if we succeed in the uh, using the Rice method, so we have to uh, have hypotheses about the function lambda of s. I, I call this property tameless property of the function lambda of s. So I see. Uh, I say that the function lambda of s is tame at s equals c is if c is a, the the right most um, no right most set singularity of the function lambda, and so this means that for real part of s larger than c. The function lambda of s is analytic. Uh, um, C, the point s equals C is a pole, and I suppose it is a so I, it is, its order is, is denoted by b plus one, and it is same if the domain on the left of real part of s equals C. Um, this domain, what, what, what I call the tameless domain, on this domain, the function lambda must be a polynomial growth when the imaginary part of S becomes large. Okay, I, here there are three possible, I consider only three possible <coughs> tame for, the, for this, for, for this tameless uh, domain. This means here, on the, on the left, it is I call periodic shape. This means I find here the, the, the point C is equal to one so on the drawing. So here, this is a periodic shape because you say C equal one is a pole, but also there, there are other poles, all on the, on, the, on the vertical line, real part of S equal C. 
and the other, the, the, the green domain, the, the thinness domain, so there is a um, polynomial force when imaginary part of S before the large. The second, the second uh, domain is this one. It is called hyperbolic, uh, B have a hyperbolic shape because here C equals one, but now the, the, the thinness domain gets close, they get close to the, the vertical line, we all, we all part of S equals C when, when imaginary part of S gets large. And finally, the, in the sense of simpler shape, strip shape, where, where, where there is, you C equals what? And you have just the strip. Okay? And now, depending on the parameter of the thinness, in a sense, the point C, the order B, and the shape, we obtain this, this theorem, which, which uh, expresses, estimates, the expectation of the depth. So we have dominant pole, we have dominant pair here, and we have remainder pairs here. First, I must say about this theorem that it is not real new, not really new, but it is a sense of, uh, so it gathers more or less facts are well known, but which are not uh, explicitly said. Okay, so I, I, I gave you more detail after. So the dominant term, so depends on C and B, because you see, for instance, PB or GB are polynomials or a combination between polynomials and the periodic function. Uh, and the degree is at most B plus one. Okay. Here we have theta, some theta, which is related to the period because we are in the periodic shape. And also there is um, the Boolean C for one, which is because, because of the role of the gamma function at uh, the analysis. Okay. And the remainder of terms involves the thinness shapes. So, uh, for uh, strip shape or periodic shape, delta is uh, just the, the strip, the width of the strip. And uh, for uh, the hyperbolic shape, we have, so we have a sort of hyperbolic curve, and rho is relative to the shape of this hyperbolic uh, curve. Okay. And as a main part, as we will see, the source that we choose for our, the arcs, our as our starting sources are a lambda of S function, which is same at S equal one with order B equals zero. This is why, in fact, the theorem is not uh, exactly stated in the, in the literature because very often uh, the sources are good sources and in this general um, framework, lambda, so, so, so lambda of S uh, is same S equal one, so C is equal to one and B is equal to zero. So we choose this source with this fact, but we are, we, because we are interested also in the very precise result, we, are, we, are, we will choose also uh, our um, starting source with values Thickness shapes in order to have all the possible remainder types. Okay, what are the models for our starting sources? So we choose dynamical source because, in the fact, so in this case, even I choose after I choose very simple uh, dynamical source, the, the, the general framework for dynamical source is, is this in this case. It is easy to obtain very precise results. <clears throat> so, what is a dynamical source? I begin with a dynamical system. Uh, so, so, there is a, a, an alphabet, finite or denumerable. Uh, I have a partition, 
which is with, which is labeled with uh, sigma. I have encoding mapping. Uh, that me that means that for each real uh, x on each interval i sigma, I encode this uh, real by two, but by so by sigma. And finally, I have a shift mapping. Uh, that it is a big, that it is a big uh, from i sigma to t of i sigma to t image. And now, what is the emitted world? So the trajectory of x is equal to x t, t of x, t square of x, and so on. But here, I just remind, I just remember of the symbol uh, of relative to the, to the partition. I give an example. Here I start to here. So T of X, so the term T, the term of T is well, uh, T of X, so is uh, the uh, term Y from X. I will put T of X first, I continue. T square of X, so then, then. I, I, what is the word which is encoded? It is the first, the first symbol is C because T of X belongs to the third interval, which is called by C. The second one is B, and the third one is A because the T square of X belongs to the, the first interval. Here, I consider only the very particular value of the source. For it, then we call so that means that the branch, uh, the branch is projective and also expanding. And I focus on two cases, two cases. In fact, first, memoryless source with two symbols, P and Q, uh, which have here P plus Q, P and Q are the probability. So P, P plus Q is equal one. And the other is the dynamic system, just uh, to, uh, to find uh, branches and to complete. So we have so on zero P, we have this, this, uh, this curve. And on P1, we have this curve. Here, the, the, the slope is uh, one over P, and the slope is uh, one over P. And the Euclid source is. The classical source, which uh, which is related to, to the Gauss map, that means here t of x is equal one over x mod one, except when x equals zero, it is t zero equals zero. So it is on my, my three starting sources. So in fact, I have two two cases. I, I explain why I, I have two two cases for the for the memoryless source and the Euclid source. Because for memoryless source, there are periodic memoryless source or are periodic as explained later. So, what, what are the main properties of this starting, starting source? Um, so, the main advantage for a dynamical source is that the lambda series are easy to study via transfer operator. These lambda series are generated themselves by transfer operator. And on a convenient functional space, and for S close to the real axis, S is a parameter also for the transfer operator. This operator admits a dominant eigenvalue, lambda of S, with a spectral cap. This means I have, uh, that we have a sort of Peron Frobenius property um, uh, on this source. And in the memoryless case, the function, the dominant eigenvalue, lambda of S, may be periodic. It depends on the, of the, of the ratio of, between log p and log q. It is periodic when log p over log q is rational, and it is aperiodic if not. Okay, and um, all the, 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 this source have an exponential weight of order k. Why? Because of this peron frobenius property, which means that. Lambda, of, lambda sub k of, uh, of s is, uh, of, of, is exponential with uh, relative to k. 
and the phase function is long now phase. Long now phase is the, the, the dominant eigenvalue. And the, the Landau phase function are tail at s equal one with b equal zero. But now, with this standard source, I obtain three various uh, terminal shape. It may be periodic when the, the memoryless source is periodic in this case. It is aperiodic in the other case. And it is an important uh, property for the, for the Euclid sources that, that proves that this, the Euclid uh, source have, has um, a strip shape, timeless uh, domain with a strip shape. OK, now, how to rescale? So now I have defined my the, the choice for our starting sources. And now I rescale the source or I insert delay. Each of this process, I explain in fact that this is the same process but with two points of view. Um, the idea is I, I wish to slow down the speed of the subdivision of the partition. But I keep the same fundamental interval, but I change just the depths at which this fundamental interval are used. Okay. I begin by inserting delay or adding weighting times. So I begin with the source P, the expansion M of X, and just after emitting the symbol A sub L minus one, I decide to wait and to wait during gamma of L units of time before emitting the next symbol. During this amount of time, there is no emitted symbol from signal. But because I, I, I wish to, 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 to get a good length and so on, I decide to emit a waiting symbol, not in sigma, a symbol point. Here, yeah, it is a strong hypothesis. The length gamma of L may depend on L, of course, but not on X. All the X of the unit interval choose, in a sense, the same gamma of L. Perhaps it is a strong hypothesis, but even with the strong hypothesis, we obtain some perhaps interesting results. So, but it is very limited hypothesis. And why, why we wait? Because, for instance, we do not know a sub L immediately. So we have to compute. For instance, for, for the Euclid source, you have to compute. To... And in a sense, this is a sort of a realistic point of view on the source. We, sometimes we have to wait because we do not exactly know the, the, the next symbol immediately. So we obtain in this process a new source, P to the gamma, and a new expansion. So I produce E1, then I, I wait, gamma two, then I produce E2, and so on. The symbol, the symbol AL is emitted at, after uh, the time, which is exactly the sum of gamma one plus gamma two plus gamma. During this interval of time, yeah, so nothing changed from the fundamental intervals. The fundamental interval stay the same. Okay, this is a process of inserting delay or waiting times. Now we may decide it is not very, very different, but another point of view. We, we may decide to change the speed of subdivision. So I do rescaling. And rescaling is, is a just and a key increasing continuous map G with G of one equal one and the limit of G of X is infinite when X starts to infinity. So I begin with the source P with coincidence interval I sub P of X 
I consider a rescaling GIF. And I define a new source, um, P sub G, with a new coincidence interval defined like the blue expression here. So you see the new fundamental interval at the eyes in old, but here you can change, I change the time. And here I put the integer part of G of it. No, I do not change the fundamental interval, just the, the, the depth at, 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 at which I use. And of course, the property is uh, the property here is very easy. It's just the definition of the weight. And that if the source P has a weight F, it's going to show or channel, then the new source P sub G. Other, as a weight, exponential channel equal to F composed with integer part of G. Just a line proof. And now, if I start with a source of positive entropy, a good source, and if I wish a new source with zero entropy, so I am led to use rescaling G for which G of X over X tends to zero when X tends to zero. When no, 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 no. when no, yes, when it's, when it's. okay, so uh, I wish to, to use this type of scaling. Um, an XY hypothesis not so important because G to the part, the inverse of G is a, a large rose, so G. Small rows, its inverse is of large rows. So I, I, I assume that uh, the image g minus g to the minus one of L is integer. Then, because g at g minus one is increasing, I have this property, and now I consider the graph of the g. So the, it is the graph of the function g. Yeah, we say it's small rows, okay? And here I put, here's the integer, one, two, three, four. And the reciprocal image of this, so G minus three, G minus B to the power of this one, four, and so on. And now, now I consider the plateau, it's exactly the, the of length of this line, and this also the waiting time, what I previously den denoted by gamma of okay. Of course, then the two forces are the same. And the, the, the source uh, P subject, where I consider the rescaling G, or P to the gamma, when I consider inserting delay gamma, coincide, coincide exactly when the pair G, G gamma satisfy this relation. Okay. But now, okay, the process are the same, but it's, it's not the same point of view. So I keep the two points of view because the two points of view will be useful. If I am interested in process which involve lambda sub k, then, Lambda sub, lambda, the, the lambda sub k series of the two sources are related by this equality. And here I use p to the g, because I have this property. If I am interested by the lambda series, it is more convenient to use the, the point of view of the inserting delay because I have this relation between the two lambda series, P to the gamma and P only P. And you see here uh, the delay. And I use these two relations. Uh, these two relations are very important because of course, I, uh, I know something about the, my starting source. 
about lambda sub k or about lambda, and I wish to transfer from what is a new source. So this, this transfer process are very important. And I use the two point of view of the changing the source. Okay, so I define my starting source, and I, now I define a sort of a class of delays when where I, I when, what I use in the following. So I choose for a class of delay gamma sub a and b, where well, so this uh, this delay is exactly equal to a to the l integer part times l to the b. So and here is, there is a typo because a is, is not strict equality, it's large inequality. So there are two regimes. It is polynomial is a equal one or exponential is if a is larger than one. Okay, I, I explain why it is very interesting for me for me to have the, the two point of view. So I decide here to, to use delay, but I have to also express what is the, the rescaling relative to each delay. So a bit, a bit of, of a computation. And I obtain the delay, which is relative to each, uh, no, not the delay, so, sorry, the rescaling, which is relative to each delay. Uh, if a equal one, here I obtain power function for the rescaling, and if um, a is larger than one, I obtain here a logarithmic function. Okay. Now it is possible to 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 finish uh, the analysis because I have defined the starting source, so there are. Is a memoryless source possibly periodic or not periodic? I, I, I also define the delays and the rescaling that are related. And finally, I obtain a class of source that I denote by P sub A B with a starting source P and a delay uh, gamma A B. I obtain a, a, a source P which depends on the, on the starting source and on the delay. And I wish to analyze these sources from two points of view, Shannon, Macmillan, Bremen, property, or average type depth. Okay. So for the first property, Shannon, Macmillan, Bremen. It is just, so you see, I, I, have, a, I have defined a relation between our, the two lambda sub k. The lambda sub k of uh, the starting source is well known, because the starting source has a, is a, <coughs> the lambda sub k is, a, is of exponential um, type. I use the relation between the two lambda sub k and I obtain the first result, uh, which the first result. So when for uh, for a for a, a delay a gamma a, a b, so the source has an, an exponential weight equal to 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 this uh, to this here, okay. Its base function is the eigenvalue of p. You see, this is a, okay. Uh, the, the geometry of the source does not change, so the dominant eigenvalue does not change. In a sense, it's the same for the for the new source. And in fact, it arrives in the computation. So, um, in this case, uh, the map. Is asymptotic the map k, which associated to k log of i, I sub k of x, is asymptotically normal. But now you, you see that uh, the, the expectation here and the variance, of course, change of scale. Okay? But it is also asymptotically normal. 
to the strong property forces, which you have so this sort of property the forces. I begin with the source which has this property. I change the subject. Okay. I obtain the same type of um, the yeah. action. Now for the trial. So I consider a source with a million value on the offers, a class of delays, exactly. And now an important thing is a real sigma sub A, which is defined as a function of the dominant domain value by the equation A, this equation, this one, A times lambda at the power at the point sigma of A for one. Of course, when A is a, is a point one, uh, uh, sigma of sigma sub A is equal also, also is equal also to one because lambda of one is equal to one. But when uh, A is not equal to one, uh, there is so the sigma 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 of A sigma sub A is larger than one. Okay, and the following holds for the twice build on this source. You see here the, the dominant term. And here we have uh, the remainder term. And when A is not equal to one, we have for the exponential, for the expectation of the depth, uh, something which is now uh, exponential with respect to n. Here we have the same, the, the same property as before. It's in PB, PB or GB is a, poly, a polynomial or mixed polynomial and um, a periodic function of log n. B is, um, is uh, the, the integer which depends on here. This is the integer here. Okay. And Okay, the starting source gives its shape, in a sense, to the to the, the new source. Okay, and so I, I have I have a, um, a sub shape here, and here I have a sort of uh, periodic shape here if uh, if the if the source is um, uh, memoryless source periodic, and if the source is memoryless aperiodic, I have this uh, this type of uh, remainder term, and rho here is related to the irrationality exponent of a P over a Q. Okay, now I come back to the what I call no, not that come back. I I consider now what I call the computational source. P hat associated to P with P. So the delay is the time we need to compute the symbol A sub n when we have already compute A1 and 2 and, and A, AL minus 1. So this means that the fundamental interval I sub L minus 1 of X is already compute. And now how to compute the next symbol, and for instance, for the Euclidean source, we have two fundamental interval, which, which uh, and endpoints are rational, rational of size L, and we have to perform what sort of uh, computation, uh, subtraction between rational of size L and also multiplication. So the delay is it depends how, how the computation uh, is exactly happens. Exactly happens, but the delay is theta of L square or theta of L. I suppose that the, mod the model of computation is, uh, that is, is such that the delay is theta of L square. So I apply the previous result. Now my delay is relative to gamma, gamma AB with a is equal to one and b is equal to two. Then I obtain the result, just a particular case of the previous result. 
Okay, now the, the G, the G relative to the, the delay gamma A equal one, B equal two, is this delay. Okay, and so I obtain the, the, the result about uh, the shannon macmillan Bremen result and the result about the trial. Okay, in a sense, if you if we are if we are realistic, in fact, this, this is this source that we, we deal with for the Euclid source. We have to take into account the computation, the, the time for compute, uh, A sub L, when you already know A sub L minus one. Okay, as a conclusion, so I have described a process to obtain source with zero entropy. And uh, so I begin with the starting sources with well known property and good properties. I define the delay. And finally, my result, final result, elucidates the role between the starting source, for instance, via the lambda of S, which is the same for all the source. And the delay, we say A, B, and the intervention of the MP. And the results are precise. But of course, this is only a toy model because the delays are assumed to be independent of X. All the, all the X of, the, of your uh, interval must decide on the same, uh, yes, uh, must, must decide the same delay. For instance, it is not. It is not true for the, for the Euclid source, because for the Euclid source, depending on the position of X, you have uh, computational times to compute A sub L, which is not the same. Okay, so this is interesting. And many classical sources can be viewed as source with delay. For instance, <coughs> some classical source in in the number theory context, for instance, the Faraday dynamical system can be viewed as a, a source uh, which is built from the Euclid source with a delay. And the Stern process may be viewed as a source which is derived from the Faraday source itself with a delay. In this case, the delay depends on X. And if you, if, if you wish to obtain results about this source, we have to perform a probabilistic study of the delay mapping, which is no more, which is, does not depend only on, on L, but the depth L, but also on the point X. Okay, and also we have also another work in progress on the same, same style about uh, VLMC, which is Variam Lang's Markov chain that I review at a renew renewal process. And also there is a possibility to see with a delay, with the source with delay. Thank you very much. Questions in the room? Yes, thanks. I have I have two questions. One, and you know how people say there are no bad questions, but I have actually a bad question to ask first. So concerning the equivalence between delay and rescaling, one thing that I didn't understand, and Sebastian Veld said he also didn't understand, is um we communicated in chat the are these equivalent only in the for the problem of average depth of a tree or in general? And, and let me explain the issue. So there's an extra symbol, this weighting symbol in the case of delay, and there doesn't seem to be any corresponding symbol in the case of rescaling. And, and so the question I had is what about the equivalence between those two? And the question Sebastian had is, do the does the weight weighting symbol actually enter into the building of the tri, like that is, is one branch corresponding to the weighting signal. So 
Anything you could uh, clear up for this okay. movie? Okay, okay, it depends if you know the process or not. If you know the process, you know exactly, of course, because all the X have the, the same um, uh, the same delay, so it is uh, it is easy to know the delay, to consider the expansion, to remove the delay and consider directly with the twat. Okay. But this is the case when you know the delay. I, I, in, the, in, the, in the proceeding, I will, we will discuss about this. If you do not know the source, if the source means which is given to you without uh, knowing that is a source which is uh, with scale, so the, process, the, the problem is different. This is for the second part of your question. For the first part of your question, I, I, uh, I do not exactly uh, understand the question because, so I, I define the delay, I define the scaling, and I explain how to, how to why the process are the same. Right. Right, but what, wasn't it the case that for the delay description, there was an extra symbol in effect added to the alphabet, the waiting symbol. And in the case yes. of the rescaling formulation, there is no additional no, symbol. You, right? you, 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 can, you can add because during the plateau, you can, uh, you can, uh, in, fact, in fact, so. The waiting symbol has no meaning in information from the point of view in information theory. This is just to know what is the what is the length, uh, what is the time. In fact, you change of time, but you have to to to, to know what is your new time in the sense. And the the extra symbol, the extra waiting symbol, are just for this, just for for you to remember. Where you, where you are. Okay, I understand. Thanks. Is, is it clear had, or not? I I think so. I just had one other quick comment, which is that um, I I understand that it might be appreciably more difficult to incorporate delays that are independent of X, but it might also be interesting to consider random delays that that are sorry that yes. depend on X. It might be interesting okay. to consider random delays that are independent of X. Yes. This is exactly what we do, in fact, for um, when we consider the LMC. We have a sort of, uh, of uh, random delay. And the random delay, what we choose. We choose the delay in a, in a random uh, way. Thank you. Other questions? So, delay just to be all the time. Yeah, I was thinking that in the second of the question, I should talk about time delay very much. Oh, that was no, 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 there is no relation between this. But for me, delay is more on the computer time and the time. Okay, but it's like four and ten. No, I think. I don't know if it's no, I think so. Okay. Thank you so good. Thanks. Is there anything more on there? Nothing more in the chat. Sebastian just asked it to repeat May's question then. Okay. Then uh, yeah. thank you again.